Ready to discover the keys to unlocking your inner peace and unleashing your true potential? Join us in this eye-opening episode of Coffee with Tea as we sit down with the incredible Rodney. Listen now and take the first steps towards living with purpose on this episode of Coffee with Tea. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, leave a review, and share the inspiration with others. Your support is invaluable. And welcome to another episode of Coffee with Your Coffee with Tea. I'm your host Tanya Tyler, and I'm going to be talking to Miss Rodavi, and we're going to talk about live as your divine self and realizing there's more behind the veil. And those not my words; those are her words. But before we dive too much into the conversation, I want to welcome Miss Rodavi to the show. Welcome, my friend. Oh, thank you so much, Tanya. I just love being here with you. Thank you so much for uh, accepting my invitation. I know I'd like to share with the audience how we connected. Um, you were um, referred to me by Mr. Brandon Drake, the healthy uh, guy. And he was like, you need to talk to Miss Rodavi. And I was like, I will, I will. We had a pause because I went on vacation, but now I've been, I've been back. She has an excellent story about like learning about your, your divine self. But before I share her story, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Radavi. Please tell a little bit about who you are and maybe something that you've picked up from last year that you'd like to, you know, an icebreaker to get us kicked off on this conversation. So the the mic is yours, my friend. Okay. So what, what I want to say to your, to your listeners too, you know, I want to take it from where I was covered over in my conditioned self. Oh my God. <laughs> I felt like a wounded child. And I had lots of stories about that. My mother, my, my, my mother was my first teacher, but I didn't know that. She, I had so much wounding because of, because of her. But the whole thing is I had to go through my own self-healing. Self-healing is important because I walked away from my childhood stuff. I thought that's her, that little girl and now I'm growing up that's not me but I was confronted in a mystical way and and so it was important for me to go through self-healing why is that because that's when I got to understand the difficulties that human conditioning has of how it has affected humanity I can't explain how that happened but it did and and I realized from that moment, this is what my soul is here to do. My soul is here to break the code of human conditioning. And with that comes the other side. If you break the code, okay, so what happens to you? You live as your divine self. Because that's that's the highest expression. This is what this I call is the sacred temple is here to bring in our soul because the soul is here to learn, grow, and evolve. And then we learn, like me, for instance, through the wounding, the growing is to me is when you start to go through your healing because when you go through your healing, you don't, the wisdom of life is about experiencing life not being told about it. It's not going to happen. And so um, evolving now when you get to that place to say, oh, my God, I understand that what I used to believe was was the painful thing or my judgment or, or how I feel about these people who have hurt me. There's a, there's a key question here. Yeah. What is it that really hurt me? It wasn't the divine self. It was the conditioned self, the conditioning that is rampant on the planet that's causing great chaos. And I call it conditioning. You want to say the ego, the 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 the, 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 the one people think that they are, you know, and so I am not 
my house and I'm not what I do in life. <laughs> I am not my money, but I, I acknowledge and grateful for whatever it is that is brought to me. Right. But I am not that. None of us are that. We are the divine self. And so it's about letting go, um, owning, owning our our material life and feeling, okay, that's it. I've got the boat. I've got a couple million dollar house. And, you know, I'm rich and people look at me and think I'm important. Where are you really within your divine self? The wealth is inside. You know, and I have nothing against wealth because I think the way in which you express the good fortune of financial wealth is a blessing. How many people you look at who has less than you that you want to offer to? You know, I've started having money in my wallet, not much because when I see the homeless people, I need to hand them money and I look in their eyes and I say, I bless you. And that blessing wasn't just for my head, it was for my soul. Because there's no difference between any of us. Okay, so why do I say that? Someone may say, you can't tell me that because that person did this to me and that person did this to me. Remember, that divine self didn't hurt you. So there's time for for us to understand and to forgive. But... We are all one because the divine self, there's a spark. The essence of our soul is a divine spark. And what is a divine spark? Is the flame from the flame of the one God or divine, whatever you want to call it. So we're not different from each other. We're just here learning and growing in our own way. And some people fall short because they got stuck in their in their human conditioning, right? Going back to that. And that's what I'm here to do to remind people, I've been there, so I know what I'm talking about. And that's what makes me have such love and compassion for the difficulties that we go through. Because right. I know that we're living from we're not living from our authentic self, because nobody taught us that. We never learned it. You know? <laughs> nowhere, nowhere in that in this third dimensional world has anybody ever told us. Yeah. We are the divine self. Right. Hey there, podcast listeners. Are you a woman who's passionate about empowerment? Ready to make your mark in the world? Join our empowering community. We bring incredible women together, foster mentorship, and uplifting each other. In our community, we help women like you break free from confusion, feeling unstuck, and rediscover their purpose, passion, and voice. Together, we build a network of strong, empowered female leaders changing the world for the better. Don't miss out. Tune in now and be a part of our inspiring community. Join today and start your journey to empowerment. I love it. I um I wanted to, to touch on some things that you brought up because like I said, I was looking forward to this conversation. I love talking about the divine, the true self and we just and I was sharing before we got on the call. I highlighted this you statement you said my self-healing became my classroom. I learned about human conditioning and how we become entrapped in a belief system imposed on us by family and society. This was my wake-up call. And I highlighted it because I think we're still struggling with the wake-up call. You know, I think some people are starting to get the the wake-up call. Some people are starting to get the, the message that we are not what we do. But again, I think a lot of us are still struggling. So my question with that is, um, what are some of the the signs that there's awakening in you? I mean, you heard the call, but what would your advice be or or um, something to help somebody who's starting to question what's going on with themselves? Can good you help question. us with that? Sure. That's a very good question. First of all, don't go outside. 
<laughs> you have to take a trip inside because you know what? In my in my belief that every question we have has an answer. Okay. So a lot of people may be going through anxiety. And so because of that, they can't find the answer because it's there. It's a quiet message. But ask yourself a lot of questions. I used to ask myself at five years old, who am I? Why am I here? We can still do it even today. So it's about sitting in your heart, go into your heart. You know, we have, a lot of us have a hard wall around because of things that happen to us, you know, and so fear becomes the guardian at the heart space. We have to break through the wall of fear. And one of, one of the things too would be to start reading um, books by awakened teachers. A Katoli is a really great one. And another simple one, and I think I have it right here, the un untattered, sorry, the untattered soul by Michael Michael Singer. Now that is so much simpler because a lot of people can't get a Katoli's words because of the place where they are in their evolution. Mickey Singer, that's the book I would recommend because it's simple, it's down to earth, and it's talking to human beings. And it yes. helps you to lift up from that. And, and, you know, most of us really need to reach out for help too. That's reaching out for help, reading those books. But if you want someone physical, know, find someone who you feel um is spiritually inclined who does work with people you know find somebody because then you can really lay out everything from your heart because and i don't downplay anything but i really do want to say that traditional therapy is sort of in the old paradigm because it's about talk we need to feel and we need to get down deep and we need to feel the unconscious and the subconscious things that have been stuck in there. Right. Yes. And, and, and oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No. So, so those are some of the things I really reach out. Go to, go to a, a bookstore. So many people have said books have fallen. You probably have heard it. Fallen on the ground to them. Go through with your heart open. Open. You, you're there, but you're not there with an expectation. You're just there. And you may come into the spiritual or the conscious book. I don't know what they call them. And one book will just point itself to you. And you look and you say, wow. And you say, okay, I'm going to take this book up because you're so, we think that our mind is in charge. Our, our soul is in charge. And I call my also our guardian, our guardians of this, our life, our being, our life force. So it's beautiful to know that when you're feeling something, you may wonder, what, what, where is this feeling coming from, you know? And you feel, oh, I'm intuitive. But yeah, you're intuitive to hear it because your guardian is speaking to you. <laughs> Hey there! Do you love podcasts? If so, you're in the right place. By subscribing to our podcast for only $1.99 a month, you'll gain access to commercial-free video episodes with engaging and thought-provoking content while at the same time showing your support and appreciation. With regular episodes that cover a wide range of topics, you're sure to find something that interests you. Plus, subscribing is quick and easy. Just hit that subscribe button now and never miss an episode. Join our community of podcast lovers and get ready to be entertained, informed, and inspired. And again, thank you for listening. I love it. I want to um, take a po moment to pause because we're about halfway through. And Radavi's been sharing so many juicy nuggets. I've been picking them up. So I, 
hopefully you're picking them up as well. So this is where I say, if you've enjoyed our, our conversation so far, you picking up, make sure you hit that like button because I like how you said, you know, uh, the chair, uh, the guard, the guardian is. I used to, I laughed at myself years ago. I, I call my uh, heart, mind, and my body, heart, and mind, the three chairmen. And I always feel like I have to go to the board, right, before I make a decision. <laughs> See what the board members feel like. If they're, if we're not in cohesiveness, then we're not doing it. And so I was reading another quote. I highlighted another quote. I said, these veils block the light of the divine spark who we truly are. As the veils dissolve, the portal of a spiritual awakening begins to open. And I know I highlighted that because it takes, like you said, emotion. A lot of people avoid the emotions because they don't want to do it. You know, they don't do the hard work because of the emotion. So how, how would, or what would your advice be for somebody who's, you know, realizing to be able to dissolve those, those veils we had to put in that work. What would your advice be to that? Now, you want to feel your heart opening to say, there's more to me than I think I really know. And I'm ready to find out. And trust me, when we be open to, to the universe, that I want to find out, some gifts will come. And I, I'd say a little story. How, and I don't, I don't know if I mentioned to you that I get messages from the divine spark, the essence of our souls. So that's a book I'm writing. But anyway, you know, for years, I really worked with people bringing, integrating the fragments of their woundedness. For years, that was my, my specialty. People will come to me and say, I hear you do inner child work. Or somebody referred somebody. And the reason I was good at it is because of the journey of my soul, you know, so one day I had a vision and my eyes are open. There was this little boy and he was three, I knew he was three years old and he had one hand above his head with the golden key. And he said, we are here to help the adults, but first they have to take us out of confinement. I knew exactly what he was talking about. It's, the woundedness was is the veils that have covered the essence of our being, our divine self. He was telling me, I I am I I represent the essence of the divine self in humanity. And I, I didn't know the name Divine Spark. So he, I learned through the messages that they gave me. And they said, We're not wounded children, we're divine spark. And they it was so yearning, Tanya, that they want so many people to know what they are. And that is the book. So I'm just turning to the book now to say this is the reason why this book was written, the messages. And coming from, I know how the human beings are the conditioning. So the, 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 the people who are listening to, to really... Open your heart and recognize that if you're going through a hard time, it's not what you're, it's the experiences and the memories, it's the memories you had that is so confined and embedded in you. You, it's important to, to realize that you have to move these out and experience them. But one of the things People may want to push it away. This is what why people are afraid of their emotions. They push it away, or or diversion. You know, I go watch TV, or I'll eat to make me feel better, <clears throat> or I get addicted to different things because I want to get out of this place I am in. So it is not what you do; it is why you do what you do that is the issue. It's the emotions and the black memories that you're afraid of. So if you, let's say, have a, an upsetting memory that comes up, or let's say something is coming to you. Let's say you're in the office and your boss said something to you and you didn't like it. And you go home and you're really upset. More than likely... That emotion has been stored from a long time ago. He just awakened it. But 
you are feeling it. You're feeling that, and it really upset you. I'd like you to sit and just imagine that there's a wounded nest that is hurting, and you're going to be the parent for that wounded nest. Don't push it away. So, okay, come into my heart. You have been hanging around for a long time, waiting to be recognized, waiting to be accepted. And I'm here now for the first time. And come to my heart. I'm not going to walk. And I, I tell you, when we become the parent for those wounds, trust me, your fear of running away will be gone because you're facing it and said, I'm not leaving. And more than likely, you may feel tears. Whatever emotions that come to you, let it flow because you are accepting something that you had pushed away a very long time. Right. So that's one thing you can do for yourself. I love it. I love and- it. <laughs> I love it. And uh, like I said, I, I, it's amazing just how fast 20 minutes goes by. And uh, so I, I, I'm i I'm all up in the, in the conversation. But I want to ask you before we – there's a couple of questions I want to ask you before we close it out. Um, what's the one thing you want the audience to take away from your interview today? Oh, my gosh. I want you to know that you can live in inner peace. You can live in inner peace because here's someone who was so heavily wounded that lives in inner peace, and I reach out to you to let you know you can. So mm, something else is coming. The world looks very chaotic, but it's through the eyes of the person who's looking at it. So if you are at peace, you know that there are troubled waters on the planet, but you're not getting involved. Trust me. So that's that's the one thing I would love for them to take away with that. Well, thank you so very much. And my next question is where can people find you, your information, or, you know, find your services and, and the book that you have coming out? How can we find you? Okay. My... Uh, one thing, too, I give a 20-minute complimentary guidance to anyone. And it's on my website, and my website is like my name, radavi.net. So they can reach out to me there. And my book is not yet published, but, um, you know, it's interesting. I don't know where you got what you wrote, what you were reading, but that was very much a lot. That is in my book. <laughs> Tanya, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, have, I, have, I have resources that help me. <laughs> I mean, I, I just I thought, wait a minute, did Tanya read something for my book? <laughs> You're uh, brilliant. Uh, well, thank you, Miss Radavi. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, I would love to have you come back, maybe go into a deeper conversation, because I know, like I said, I keep it at 20 minutes just to, to, but that's my military side in it. Um, So, (laughs) but um, I want to thank you so much for sharing your insight and your wisdom with us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Tony. It's such a pleasure. And just, you know, your spark shines, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so very much. And I want to thank everybody who tuned in today's episode. Remember that feedback is always welcome. The links that Radhavi mentioned will be posted down in the description box. So please make sure you check out those juicy gems down there. Find the book, you know, follow up, maybe ask us some couple of questions. Again, if you enjoyed today's show, please hit that like button. And if you want to get more insight like what Radhavi shared today or some other great guests that we have, please hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we will see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now.